uh, a feminist art activist, I am that person. Uh, I have, my work is actually very psychological and I observe the guys. When I was a student at Yale in the 60s, I had, um, I had read an article in the New York Times and the article said, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Albee and that was taken from graf bathroom graffiti. So at the time, Yale was an all-male undergraduate school. The, they had graduate students from the beginning that were women, but it was an all-male undergraduate. And when I went into the bathrooms, I had a great time. This was observing the guys. This had a lot of psychological information, and it was at the same time as the Vietnam War. And of course, I was very anti-Vietnam. And I did, a, I did a lot of paintings that were called Fuck Vietnam, and they're all cocks all over the place, by the way. It was really, it was an amalgamation of feminism, anti-war, and sex, which is a great combination. See, in the 60s, it was a whole different thing. People said a lot of things that were very sexist, and women were put in a very diminutive position. When I first came to Yale, um, Jack Twerkoff was the head of the uh, Yale Art School, and he said, we can't place women. So here women had access to the educational system, but when they got out in the real world, forget about it, you couldn't get a job. So that was a, a, a big enlightenment. I never felt any discrimination in the 60s, uh, being a woman, in terms of academia. But when I got out, there was a slap in the face. You know, I started out saying um, with these pop art uh, kind of pieces with the screw. So I also, it was like screw, screw being screwed. And then of course the screw became this phallus and the screw became these large phallic presences that were enormous. And I always signed them with my name very large because I wanted people to know that a woman had done this. And my name, Judith Bernstein, is very, you know it's a woman. <laughs> so that gave me the punch, and it also I own the work, which is, which is wonderful. And now I'm doing these works that are, um, that you're dealing with women. And you're also, many times women have been sentimentalized in terms of when they use the vagina and the cunt. And that's not the case. Women have a lot of anger, they have a lot of rage. And my own work has anger and rage, but it also has play and it also has fun. So it's a, it's a combination of all that. I use uh, the woman as the face of the universe because she's part of the birth process and the Big Bang. And also you have satellites that are um, penises, men with erections and, and also fa uh, flaccid ones. And they're all circling the woman, by the way and they're smaller. So the woman is the birth and she is the center of the universe. And I noticed um, I have a lot of anger, but my mother had a lot of anger. And the groups that I was in, uh, involved with, a lot of the uh, Guerrilla Girls, the um, AIR, Artist in Residence, which was a fir the first women's gallery in 1973. I had their first one person show there. And um, it, was, it was such a great pleasure to have, to be surrounded by these incredible phalluses all over the place, which was a metaphor for what the outside world was about. And uh, so I did, uh, I did all this work, and then I went, to, I went to the woman and observing women. And I don't sentimentalize them because many times you have women in the political process who are very aggressive and also have a lot of war in them. Um, I don't, a, a, a war and, and um, a lot of aggression is actually very good in, in a lot of ways. There are obviously bad points to it because we're talking about war and death, which are horrors. But, and, and the work I've done, even when it's the crudest, it's never as crude as what war is about and the, the horrible things that happen. But, it's a, but what's good about aggression is that it, it uh, makes people go farther. It actually makes, it, it, it has a lot to do scientifically. 
And I find that now with this extraordinary information that we're getting now about the universe, the expansion of the universe, all the kinds of things, there's like no holes barred in terms of black holes and all, it's so sci-fi. If, if we're not scientists telling you this, you would think this is science fiction, this is not true. But um, it's actually, it's a wonderful time to be alive. And not only about the universe, but about everything. But what's interesting to me now is I'm making a metaphor between the universe and the satellites and the Big Bang and the cunt and the cock. But in the universe, that's actually the way it plays out, that it's one thing in relation to something else. They don't exist on their own. And in essence, that's part of it too. So I'm making an analogy between my work, the, the, the cunts, and how the world has been changing. And it's, and it's constantly changing and expanding as the universe is expanding.